tough act to follow. <laughs> so I am Letitia Thomas. I am the director of all of our diversity-related programming initiatives and strategic partnerships at Dev Bootcamp. I also am on the board of and an organizer of Great Speak Code, which is a, an organization that increases the visibility of women technologists by encouraging them to write blog posts, write books, um, speak at conferences, and contribute to open source software projects. And our conference is actually in less than two weeks from now in Chicago, so people should check it out. A little shameless plug there. So I'm here to talk to you about engineering empathy. So back in 2012, so a little over four years ago, um, when we first opened Dead Boot Camp, we went to tech companies all over the Bay Area, and we asked them what they were looking for in a web developer, but specifically, like, what core competencies do you look for in entry-level developers? And what we expected was a laundry list of computer science concepts um, to be highlighted, but across the board, shockingly, across the board, uh, most engineering managers um, said soft skills. Like, can you teach them some soft skills? And that's because one of the <laughs> main reasons that projects fail, software projects included, right? This is hilarious. He's so proud of himself. <laughs> One of the main reasons that software projects fail is not because people don't know what they're doing. It's not because people don't know how to code. It's because uh, teams don't communicate effectively. And like the strength of one individual contributor can't really override a dysfunctional team. So what started as unstructured conversations at our coding school evolved into the six module emotional intelligence and soft skills curriculum that we teach at Dev Bootcamp. And I didn't mention what Dev Bootcamp was. Uh, Dev Bootcamp is an immersive school for web development. So we teach beginners how to code and then they go out and find jobs at a lot of the companies that are represented here today. And really cool that like there are so many speakers who are up here who also did coding boot camps. So it's a really it's a really great way to get into the industry. So yeah, we teach tech skills, but we also teach this emotional intelligence training that focuses on self awareness and resilience and the inner critic and feedback, communication, social awareness, and allyship. And we called it engineering empathy because we think we're clever and it's kind of a cute name and we call it EE for short. So there's a growing body of research that shows that emotional intelligence um, or our ability to connect with other people and relate to other people is like something that we have the capacity for when we're born, like it is innate and inherent, but it's also a skill set that can be developed over time. So at Dev Bootcamp, we're fully committed to the idea that, or the belief that empathy, just like coding, is something that can be learned. And it's something that we want to help teach. So how does empathy um, also help you improve inclusion? So diversity is good, we know this. Or else we wouldn't be sitting in this room right now. This is not an insight. Um, we have an abundance of proof to reinforce this. And we've shared some of that proof with our coworkers, our peers, um, our management. Um, we have shared the data. Uh, we have shared reports on how companies with more diverse leadership teams or boards have better outcomes, um, are more successful, have greater financial returns. We've tried to appeal to our teammates' altruism, um, sense of altruism, and like, have essentially asked them to do the right thing. Um, have, yeah, tried to, to convince them that it's the greater good and that that's the reason why you should be doing this. And like, it may or may not have uh, moved the needle at your company. And you've also probably shared with your teams that diversity is not, in fact, the same thing as inclusion. So you can invite people to the table, but do you give them the space to speak? You can invite them to speak, but do you actually integrate their ideas? Um, you can bring them into the room, but do they feel like they're at home? And what we found 
through our work at Dev Bootcamp is that simply presenting data and abstract proof points wasn't enough to stimulate a sense of shared accountability around these issues, like issues of inclusion specifically, and what we really needed was for students and staff to tap into a shared sense of vulnerability, so like true empathy, like feeling with people instead of for people, and we try to give them a set of tools to practice that. So we talk about the four qualities of empathy. So perspective taking. Um, you don't have to agree with someone, but you can at least understand where they're coming from. And open-mindedness, this is huge. Um, essentially having a beginner's mindset all the time in everything that you do. And a willingness to suspend certainty and being right about issues in order to truly understand someone else's perspective. We talk about discernment, um, the ability to experience empathy and feel with someone without like fully taking on their emotions as your own. And so essentially like creating some boundaries. And also receptivity, a uh, willingness to internalize feedback um, with an understanding that if somebody is giving you feedback and that speed, feedback is specific and actionable and kind, it's coming from a place of commitment to the relationship. So very rarely does someone who is walking down the street and get catcalled by someone stop on the street and give them very specific feedback about like how that thing made them feel because you don't care about that person and like feedback may come in a different form in those like situations um, but when you're doing it with a coworker, it's because you care about them, you care about the relationship, and you care about being comfortable and feeling safe around them. And so that's important, and like why it's so important um, to think about that when feedback is shared and internalizing it. Because when you're operating from that mindset, you realize that it's okay to expose your ignorance and that it's also okay to be wrong. And I like to show this graphic because it gives people a sense of how unlikely it is that you're going to always get it right when it comes to issues of inclusion. So if you think about all of the world's knowledge, there's what you know. So just quickly, shout out what you know. Something you know, anything. This is a very smart What's that? Awesome, I also know how to tie my shoes. What's something that you don't know? I don't know how to speak French. I'm sure there are things that you don't know. What's something that you don't know that you don't know? <laughs> exactly. If it existed in language for you, if you could articulate it, it would be something that you didn't know. So like things that you don't know that you don't know exist in the lived experiences of other people. And if you can remember that, if you can remember that like when someone's sharing something with you, that that's their truth, and even though it's not your truth, that it's valid, um, you can start to validate other people's experiences without also invalidating your own. And when you do this, it opens the possibility of a richer dialogue. So it allows you to like really divorce feelings of shame that happen when talking about like issues of social identity and oppression and bias. Um, we know that shame is so pervasive, and also that it's not a useful emotion. It really corrodes the part of us that like, believes that you're capable of change, because when you start to see the issue as, when you don't see the issue as a behavioral one, so when you don't see it in terms of like choices and actions that you're making, rather than a personal one, so being privileged equals bad, and if I acknowledge my privilege, then that means I'm bad, uh, versus, like, privilege is a societal phenomenon and I benefit from it and I can take actions um, to like mitigate that um, and also to increase um, also to increase like opportunities for other people like if you can if you can see it that way it like increases the willingness for people to engage in these issues and to be more introspective about them. And so essentially the goal is to, the goal of these conversations is to create an abstract awareness for people around these issues. And so like in creating that abstract awareness, people can start to develop some self-awareness and how like they, they 
exist within these power structures and how they ultimately benefit from them. Um, and also, it allows them to be more receptive to feedback after they take an action that may have been offensive, like after they have committed a microaggression that has offended someone, that they can say, oh, okay, I didn't know, and thank you so much for that feedback, and I won't do it again. And so in the future, you can stop yourself before acting because you're committed to that relationship. You want them to feel comfortable around you, and you know what you did wasn't okay, um, and you won't do it again. And that's how behavioral change is created. And so essentially, these conversations, and specifically ones that um, are rooted in empathy, creates the opening for behavioral change. And so since we've been having these conversations, um, and since engineering empathy has been around, we, we have lots of grads, um, they've gone out and gotten jobs at companies, and they talk about the curriculum, and so we've had companies that we've worked with um, and that we've shared this, these workshops with, but we always do it with one caveat, that this is not a magical pill or like a silver bullet to, to solve all of the diversity and inclusion issues at your company. Um, it's a conversation. It's an opening um, for greater awareness around the issues. Tech doesn't exist in a vacuum. We know that. We heard that earlier. Um, it's really a reflection of the external uh, oppressive power structures that exist in the world. And so if your, if your tech company's diversity issues aren't rooted in social justice, it's set up for failure. So like, what we want to do with these conversations um, is not just talk about the issues, but like create a shared sense of accountability around them, and that's what empathy does. So if you want to learn more about our work, about my work, um, if you just want to talk about things, I like to talk to people, feel free to email me at letitia.bootcamp.com or tweet at me, and thank you so much for listening to